So adsorption, uh, you're quite fam quite familiar with absorption, but adsorption and absorption are two different things. So, for example, if you have a sponge and you uh, soak it in water, then the water is absorbed. Uh, so the water is absorbed inside because it enters the sponge. It will enter inside the sponge. It will not stay on the surface. It goes inside the sponge and that is absorption. But adsorption is when it does not go inside but it stays on the surface. So I have also talked about adsorption in the uh, on the playlist on reaction kinetics when I am describing heterogeneous catal catalysis. So if you want to uh, if you want a deeper understanding of the process of adsorption, I would recommend you to watch that playlist on reaction kinetics. But adsorption is when the, the compound stays on the surface rather, rather than entering inside the, uh, the compound, the, the surface. So thin layer chromatography, it works on the principles of adsorption. Now you can see that the stationary phase is very polar and the mobile phase is very non-polar. So the more po polar the solute, the solute that is being separated from the mixture, the most, the most strongly they adsorb onto the stationary phase because obviously like attracts or dissolves like. Uh, so um, I mean um, polar will be attracted to polar and non-polar will be attracted to polar. It's the same concept of like dissolves like. So um, if the, the more pol polar the solute, for example, if it is an alcohol or a carboxylic acid, then it will be more strongly adsorbed onto the onto the um, stationary phase. So the, if it's more strongly adsorbed onto the stationary phase, then it has traveled a shorter distance because the stationary phase, as the name suggests, it's stationary. It is hindering the movement of the solute. So uh, the more the more polar the solute, the more strongly the adsorb onto the stationary phase, and hence move a shorter distance and at a lower speed. They are slower and they move a shorter distance. The more non-polar the solute, non-polar like an alkane or an alkene, uh, something like that, uh, the more non-polar the solvent, the more, the, the more uh, soluble they are in the non-polar solvent, again like dissolves like. So obviously if they are non-polar then they will not get absorbed onto the polar, they will get, they will, they will, they, they will be more soluble in the non-polar solvent. So obviously they will dissolve in the mobile phase rather than sticking to the stationary phase rather than adsorbing to the stationary phase and the, hence the more non-polar the solute the more soluble they are in the mobile phase and hence move a longer distance at a higher speed. So in this diagram uh, let's label this A, B and C. C has moved the shortest distance which means C is the most polar among A, B and C and it has most strongly adsorbed onto the stationary phase and A is the is the least polar which means it is the most non-polar and uh, as A is the most non-polar it is more, more soluble in this uh, in the solvent so it has moved the largest distance and at the fastest speed as you can see in the diagram. So this is the chemistry behind TLC and while paper chromatography works on uh, works on the principles of partitioning, TLC works on the principles of adsorption. You need to know the difference. Now another new type of chromatography for you is high performance liquid chromatography, HPLC. So HPLC is like a very modern technique of chromatography which not only tells you about the so solutes present in a solute mixture but also the proportion of solutes present in the solute mixture. So it's quite an advanced technique of chromatography and it also works on the principles of partitioning uh, and you will see that soon. So you don't need to know the, uh, the entire process that you don't need to know this diagram but what you need to know is something called retention time. So while we were calculating RF values in thin layer chromatography, paper chromatography, and two-way chromatography. Now we are going to switch to something called retention time rather than RF value. So now we are not doing RF value, now we are doing retention time. So in thin layer chromatography also you have the solvent front, let's say E, you have the you have the reference line F, 
and you can hence and hence you can calculate the RF values in thin layer chromatography as well, just as you do in paper chromatography. But 